Hello, my name is Joe Hoyle speaking to you from the University of Richmond. By now you've had a chance to read Chapter 9. You've learned about cost flow assumptions, FIFO, LIFO, weighted average, moving average. You've learned how cost flow assumptions affect the reporting of ending inventory and cost of goods sold. Now I have made a list of what I believe is the top five most important things in Chapter 9. Hope you've done that also. So let's look to see what I thought. Afterwards, you can decide whether you agree with me or not. Here is number five. For me, number five was the LIFO conformity rule. Many people do not understand why so many companies in the United States choose to use LIFO even though it will deflate their income if they're in a period of inflation. Why look poor? Why look worse? Well, what you want to do, of course, is to look poorer or to look like you have less income for income tax purposes. But the LIFO conformity rule requires that if you choose to use LIFO for your income tax return, then you must do the same thing on your financial statements. It's a very odd portion of the Internal Revenue Code. If you use LIFO for tax purposes, then you must use it for financial reporting purposes. If it was not for that requirement, most companies would use LIFO for their tax return and probably FIFO for their financial statements. So the popularity of LIFO is almost completely attributable to the LIFO conformity rule. To me, in chapter number nine, that was the fifth most important thing that I saw. Number four was the fact that if you choose to use LIFO in a period of inflation, then eventually your ending inventory will really be worth a lot more than what's reported on the financial statements. I have stressed all along in this book that I want you to understand the information that's conveyed. Therefore, you need to understand if you see that a company is applying LIFO, then probably the inventory figure on their balance sheet is really going to be worth more than it's being reported. That's a piece of information that you need to know to be able to assess and understand the information that's being conveyed. That's a primary characteristic of LIFO and over a long enough period of time, the difference between what is reported and the actual value of the inventory can be significant. Since I want you to understand the information on financial statements, I view that as number four. Number three for me, was a comparison of the characteristics of FIFO and LIFO. If you look at a set of financial statements and you see that FIFO or LIFO has been chosen, you need to know what the impact of that decision was. In a period of inflation, FIFO will give you a higher reported net income and a higher reported ending inventory, often much higher. LIFO, on the other hand, again, in a period of inflation, will give you a lower net income and a lower ending inventory. That's just the characteristics of those two methods. Since I want you to understand what you're seeing, it's important to understand how these two methods affect the financial reporting. Therefore, for me, when I made my list, I put that number three. Now we move to number two. We talk about FIFO and LIFO and averaging. When are they actually applied to financial reporting? When is the effect actually created? If you have a periodic system, then those cost flow assumptions are applied at one point in time only. When a physical inventory is taken, which is usually at the end of the period, and you're trying to determine the cost of the units in ending inventory. That cost is determined by the cost flow assumption that is being used. 
Thus, once you have the cost of that ending inventory using FIFO or LIFO or averaging, then you can put it into the formula beginning inventory plus purchases minus ending inventory to get cost of goods sold. Only applied once and only applied to determine the actual cost of the units found in ending inventory. In a perpetual system, the cost flow assumptions are used all the time. Every time you make a sale in a perpetual system, you transfer inventory cost into cost of goods sold. The decision as to which inventory cost to convey to cost of goods sold is based upon the cost flow assumption. So if you make sales every day, in a perpetual system, the cost flow assumption comes into play every single day. That to me was very important in understanding how to use FIFO, LIFO, and averaging. I made that number two. And now we're ready for number one. This whole chapter is about cost flow assumptions. I wanted you to understand why a cost flow assumption is actually needed. Often students will memorize FIFO, LIFO, and averaging and never really understanding why that is important. Any time that you have inventory that costs different amounts, unless you're going to use specific identification, whenever something is sold, you have to make an assumption as to which cost you're moving from inventory to cost of goods sold. Now notice, I'm not talking about which unit was actually sold. We don't know that, and we really don't care. What we are interested in is which cost is moved. Any time that inventory costs different amounts, then you have to make an assumption about which cost is going to remain in ending inventory and which cost goes to cost of goods sold. The cost flow assumption is what guides that movement. That's chapter nine. A lot of material to help you fully understand what the inventory account is reporting and how to understand the amounts. Hope you've enjoyed reading chapter nine. Hope you've learned a lot.